Hello guys, welcome to Deep Course and in today's video we will discuss red code question 2360 that says longest cycle in a graph. So here guys you are given one directed graph of n nodes numbering from 0 to n minus 1 and uh, uh, you need to return the length of longest cycle of the graph. So the some things you have to note here is see each node has at most one outgoing edge. Okay and here the input is given in this uh, form of edges array. So here this edges array what does it mean? That means that the in node of the index i uh, has an edge outward edge to the value of edge of i see that means so this is i is equal to 0 here means index 0 so this index 0 has a value 3 so that means this index node 0 will have a directed edge towards 3 now direct uh, now node 1 will have directed edge towards 3 node 2 will have directed edge towards 4 so guys this is the way you are given the input of the directed graph got it uh, and yeah, a cycle is a path that starts and ends from the same node. So if there is a cycle, we need to return its length. And if no cycle exists, then return minus 1. So if you take a look at this example, so this type of graph will be formed if you uh, use these edges and uh, draw a graph. So here you can clearly see that there is a cycle from node 2, 4 and 3. So this is a cycle. Right. And the length of the cycle is 3. So we return 3 as our answer. There is no other cycle in this graph. Okay. Now guys, if you take a look at this example, there is no cycle. So we return minus 1. If there is no cycle, then simply return minus 1. So guys, if you take a look at this graph, say here, this is one cycle, right? This is one cycle here of a length 3 and this is one cycle of a length 4. Say, while building, by considering this graph, I have kept a node that a node can have at max one outgoing edge, right? Or any no nodes are there present here with the outgoing edge more than one. See, if you can see, take a look here. None of the node has more than one outgoing edge. It can have more than one incoming edge, but only one outgoing edge. Okay. So it's uh, it is simple to identify that this is one cycle of a length three. This is another cycle of a length four. Now, in order to keep a track of a cycle, you have to visit a node. So you have to visit nodes. So how you can visit a node by using traversal techniques like DFS or BFS. So here we will use a DFS, right? Now, if you want to check if a cycle is present or not, how you can check? So let's say you are visiting all the nodes by using DFS traversal. Uh, so let's say from zero, I mean from here you are visiting one, one to two, two to three, three to one, right? This is the path of a directed graph you will follow to if you start a DFS traversal from zero. This is what DFS from zero, right? So this is how it will go. Now you can see here, that this one was already visited and it is again visited during a DFS of zero, right? This is again visited this node. So what you can do if you want to check a cycle, you can do DFS traversal plus maintain some visited boolean array. So this would be of type boolean. So whenever we visit any node, we will mark it as true. So this is true. This is true. This is true. This is true. And afterwards from three, you are moving to one that is already true. Then we can say that it is a cycle. The cycle is present because we are visiting that same node again. So I hope you guys understood till now that by keeping track of a visited boolean array, uh, by do, while doing DFS traversal, we can check there if there is a cycle or not. Now the complexity here arises is we need to keep track of a length, length of the cycle. So how we will do that? Same. Let me show you that again by uh, taking a simple DFS traversal only. We nothing uh, complex here to say. Same. You are visiting. Uh, let's assume that you are visiting this node. Uh, we are doing what here first thing we are doing is dfs of zero we are calling this function uh, starting from node zero so you are visiting this node at a time t1 that is the t1 time or the first second second time one second so you will this uh, visit this node at a time t2 visit this node at a time t3 and adjacent of two there is only one node t uh, t3 means that node 3 and you will visit this in a t4 time so now from this you will when you will visit this you will check that this is already visited so t2 is already visited and what you are doing uh, and what is the time you are visiting this node t4 right so how you will calculate now the length is length is simple length would be what t4 minus t2 plus 1 right this is 4 minus 2 plus 1 that is 3 and this is the length of this cycle correct so if you keep track of a time at which a node is visited keep track of a time at which the node is visited then you can check and uh, then you can get the length of a node right got it so here to keep the uh, keep track of a cycle along with the length of a cycle, then what we have to do we have to do DFS plus visited array plus t 
time of visit. So we have to keep track of this time of visit. Then only we can get uh, the length of a cycle if the cycle is there. Or oh, okay, right. So after this DFS call from DFS zero, you will visit this node. Now there are some nodes remaining in this graph that are unvisited. So you will call a uh, DFS from unvisited node. So the four is unvisited node. You will visit this again in. Now you are starting this DFS in at the time one. So you will visit this in a T one second. Now from here, if you see this, this is already visited. So you we won't visit this, right? So yeah, then we call for DFS uh, for a node five. From here, we will visit this node at a time one second. But node four is suggest a node is already visited. So we then stop and call DFS for a node six. We will visit this in a time one second, and we will see the node five is already visited. So we won't visit it. Then we will call for DFS for a node seven. We will visit this in a one second. That is T one time. We will visit adjacent in T two. Adjacent of eight would be visit in T three, and this would be visit in T four. Now after this, you will see that yeah, node seven adjacent to node ten is already visited. So that is that means that is a cycle because the adjacent node is visited. And what will be the length of the cycle? It is simply four minus one plus one. That means length four. So yeah, I hope you guys understood that how we will we are calculating the length or if the cycle is present or not. Okay, correct. So now let's move on to the coding part. Coding part is very much simple. It is the fundamental DFS only that we are doing, but with a slight complexity we we are adding to DFS. That means we are simply tracking the time and also track checking if the node is already visited or not. This is a simple complexity. You can say that we have added to our DFS function. So from the starting, if I show you, so this is uh, what I have created. I have created one adjacency list based on the given input, so it is easier to uh, implement. And then uh, I created one boolean array of visit, and I check if it is visited or not. Okay, if it is not visited. Then I what I do? I uh, say first if it is not visited, then I have to create this timer uh, for a time at which a node will be visited, right? So I created this timer, and I set a time of five visiting the ith node to one, right? This is t one, okay? And then I call this DFS function uh, on i, okay? Clear till here. Now here I first mark the node as visited. I, then I check for the neighbors. This is what we do in DFS. So if a neighbor is not visited, then what we do? We are first update the time of the neighbor, time of the visit of neighbor. That would be nothing but a time of node plus one. This node time of visiting this node plus one, and then calling a DFS function on the neighbor, right? And if this is the thing that is different from our normal DFS function, here we are checking. Else if that means the node is not visited, and time dot find neighbor is not equal to time dot end. See. Uh, what is this thing? I I let me explain you here. Uh, so uh, assume that this is the graph. Okay. So assume that these are these are already visited. These are already visited. These are already true. Okay. These are all visited. Now we are doing a DFS for four. Assume that we are doing a DFS function uh, on a node four and other nodes like only node zero, one, two, three are already visited. So guys, we will visit this node in a time t one. Okay, right. Now, if you don't check for this condition, so this condition states what? That if the adjacent node is visited, that means there is a cycle, right? But if it is it visited in the current DFS call or previous DFS call, see all these nodes, all these nodes were visited when when we are calling DFS for zero node zero during DFS for node zero these are visited, but they will mark we will mark these as visited, but this condition will check whether we are we have visited this node in a Current DFS call or not? That means if the node with value two, if it is present in the current time or not, it means it it is not equal to n. That means it is not it is present in the current current DFS call. Then only we will check for answer. Answer would be nothing but a maximum of previous answer and the new time difference. Okay. So this is the thing that we will only check for the length of a cycle if the node is visited during the current DFS call. So if uh, there is something like this node two that was visited in the previous DFS call, then we can't check for the uh, this length, right? So yeah, this is one uh, only thing that you have to keep in mind. The rest, all things are nothing but a simple DFS call. So guys, I hope you guys understood this question, the approach as well as coding part here. Now talking about the time and space complexity. The time and space complexity would be both uh, that is same as the DFS that is big O of n would be the time and space complexity for this question. 
So yeah, that's all for this video. Make sure you like this video and subscribe to our channel. Thank you.